So I've been doing some research on the EV blog forum where this multimeter is discussed in quite a large thread, which I mentioned before. It's like 23 pages currently. Now a couple of things I mentioned in it, which are known issues with these, is that there's a capacitor right here, which is C215, right here. These are known for having an issue where the marking on the PCB is incorrect. So it's got the positive that side, so based on the markings, that capacitor is the correct way around. Uh, we'll check that. I don't think it is. And there's another issue, which is where K006, which is over here, gets hot. It's got a control issue or something. So I need to look into that part a little bit more. This doesn't appear to be modified, so there are known modifications to these to fix the issue with this heating up, which causes a thermal EMF and it causes reading errors. And being an 8.5 digit meter, you want to minimise all those kinds of things. So there's two known errors with these, and my unit appears to have both of those errors from what I can see. I'm going to measure the voltages on this capacitor right now, and we'll see if it is backwards or not. Right, I've got the Fluke 289 set up over here, which I was given recently to do a review on. And by now the review would be published, so if you haven't seen it, go and check it out. So let's actually measure on here. Let's actually see what we get. So I'm going to stick some rest on the frame there, because I know it should be safe to rest on. That's on supposedly the negative side. This is on supposedly... I'm just going to rest on the frame. Rest on supposedly the positive side. And we're getting minus 5.4 volts. That capacitor is in backwards. That needs fixing. So there's the capacitor removed. Oh, it's not even in focus, but yeah, there it is. And I measured 8 microfarad at 23 ohms. Here's what I'm going to put in. It's not the same size, but it's same capacity. 10 microfarad. And this is 10 microfarad. It measures at 6 ohms, so significantly better. So I'm going to put this one in. Let's see if I can do this on camera. It's got it sitting in place right now. Because it is a smaller footprint, I can actually just solder it in by hand. So let's put a bit of flux on it. Don't put too much on. I'm trying to minimise how much dirt I put on the PCB. And what I think I'll actually do is just put a little bit of solder on there. And then I'll just drop the capacitor on. Solder one leg on because it's a different footprint. So it will um, it gives me room to actually do this. And let's not put it down the wrong way, like they did. And the reason I did it wrong around is because the footprint is marked incorrectly on the PCB. So I can't understand why I got it wrong. PCB marking error. That's why you shouldn't always just trust the uh, markings on the PCB, because sometimes they're not right. Let's try to do it this way so you can see what I'm doing, maybe. Without touching anything else I shouldn't be touching. Time to soak, get it flowing underneath. Yep. Okay, I think we're good there. Give that a clean up, that's that particular problem solved. Look into this relay problem. Well, I've cleaned all that up now with a bit of IPA, so it's all nice and clean around there. No residue left on there, so that. That's that bond done. So I've had this thing powered up now for probably five minutes. Not very long really. So the middle relay is currently active. So this one right here. That's one which is K006, which is known to have a programming issue with the logic, apparently. And there's a modification listed for how to resolve that problem. This is obviously causing thermal EMS because it's getting hot. And the crosshairs are on that relay. And you see it's about 31 degrees. And the ones next to it are, well, you know, cooler than that. 27 or so, 26, thereabouts. Alright, so that relay is getting warm, and that's known as being a problem. It's getting 32 there, so you can get 32. Bring the thing around this way a bit and have a look from this angle. Yeah, I'm getting about 32 there, so it's still climbing. 32 to 33 nearly. So yeah, it's got an issue with thermals. So I think I'm going to do the modification. 
Let's plug this thing back in again. Power it back up. It was powered up, okay. And we'll see how that goes. Um, I haven't insulated this wire yet, I will do, once I'm sure this actually works. In case maybe there's a difference between firmwares, because this is a later one. This is the latest day code I can see on chips on here is like 99. The PCBs are 96 in most cases, but um, the latest day code I see is 99 on some of these chips. So I think it says it's built in 99. And the firmware down here, we've got 004246A02 on U103. And U102 is 004245A02. So this is later firmware than mentioned for this relay issue. So I don't know if the relay issue was actually fixed the later firmware. Either way, the relay is getting hot. So it, I'm assuming it's going to be wrong. So I'm going to do the modification that's been listed for it. And we'll see how it goes. I mean, I've done the mod. I've done the wiring. I'm just going to let it run for a little while. I'm going to test it make sure it actually does function. In case uh, maybe that relay is not on properly or something like that. And then I'll check the thermals, you know, after it's been on for a little while, see if it's different. But no magic smoke, it's always a good thing. So I was doing some basic voltage testing and it, it still seems to be functioning, so excellent. It's measuring voltages still. I'm going to insulate that wire so it doesn't touch anything. I think that's those modifications they're done. I'll check the heat, heat on this soon once it's warmed up a bit. Or had a chance to warm up a bit. So I just did a self test on this to make sure that that relay seems to be working properly and it seems to be behaving. Self test passed, so that's good. Let's insulate this wire. Right, let's check this thing. Relays are right there. I'm pointing the crosses now basically on that relay where it was. You can kind of see that slightly warmer spot because that's the only one that's on, I think. Getting 29, so that's a few degrees cooler. Um, come around the other side here, which you can't see me doing. Yep, yeah, getting 29 there as well, so it's definitely a few degrees cooler. It's been on there for about 10 minutes since the last time. So, yep, yeah, all good. That's an improvement, as expected. So there's the original wire, which is heat shrunk. There's a black wire coming up here, which is the one I put on. I've got some gunk on there to secure it. And it comes down over here. It comes down to there, which is on R206. And you can see I've also gunked that as well to secure it down. So that's gunked down over there, so it doesn't want to stress the pad or the edge of the component which is the top, which it's sold onto, because it's just sold onto the end of a, I don't know, it's probably an 0602 resistor or something, I think it is. It's going to be an improvement, I think. Now, there's lots of modifications that people have been trying on the UBBOC forum. I'm not going to attempt them. I just want to keep it as factory as I can, apart from those two known problems. That's it. That's all I want to change, at least at this time.